Hello there and uh, welcome to my next tutorial in the Getting Started series. In this one we're going to be doing a tutorial on getting started with the Universal Render Pipeline. So the Universal Render Pipeline, as I set up a project here, is one of the um, templates that you have. So I'm going to be using 2020.2.1, but it should work in any of the modern uh, Unities. I'm just going to uh, rename this to uh, URP Test, and then uh, you'll see the Universal Render Pipeline is down here. So um, if you use a little I, you'll see a little bit more information about the URP. But the URP is uh, apparently a lot more um, performant and uh, it has uh, one of the cool things, it has a built-in shader graph which is pretty good. Uh, but I've noticed that when you first create this project, so we'll create the project and I'll keep talking, so I'll hit the create. Um, when you first create the project you get an awful lot of extra stuff in there that you don't really need. Um, and I just wanted to show people how to, uh, what you're allowed to get rid of, and what you should get rid of, and what you shouldn't get rid of, and uh, and then a quick uh, demo of some of the cool things that the project uh, template can do. So when the URP finally comes up, you'll see some uh, a sample scene has already been set up here, and uh, you can move around as normal. The sample scene gives you a really good idea of how to set up a scene, um, and I'll show you some of the important things that exist within it. Um, the um, important things that you absolutely must have is the um, there's a built-in post-processing effects into the universal render pipeline, and in order for those, in order for you to decide on what you which ones you want and uh, the values of those, you need a post-processing volume. So this post-processing volume um, is just a game object on the scene that has this uh, this volume on it. This volume comes from the um, sample scene volume profile, which is in the settings folder. So the, the settings folder is, um, I'll just quickly open this settings folder, is one thing that you shouldn't delete. There is a few other things in here that you can uh, just leave alone, um, but the sample scene um, profile there is the post-processing effects and you can add more like uh, motion blur or depth of field in here and um, by default when you've got the post-processing volume on any of your scenes as long as you have the profile set to the same one it will use those all of those um, settings. Uh, you could uh, you must have this forward renderer as well um, in order for that to work so uh, you should definitely leave the settings folder alone. Um, the camera that's on your scene doesn't do anything particularly flash either and um, but it does have a simple camera script on and that's inside the scripts folder you're welcome to keep the scripts folder most people when you make a project anyway you're going to make a scripts folder um, but you may or may not want to use this um, existing simple camera controller um, on any of the cameras by default you can just create a camera and it'll just work as for the graphic settings that we saw in the um, settings folder there you can pretty much leave these alone by default. You get left, you get set up with the uh, high quality rendering, um, and you can see that this is the um, the the high quality rendering has some of the settings that you can change in here, or you can just leave them as they are um, by default. Um, they work pretty good. So uh, in order to find out um, where they are, you can find in the build settings if you go to player settings. And then if you go to graphics, you'll see um, that we're currently set up to use the high quality rendering. And obviously, if you have if you're targeting a lower um, platform um, or mobile, you can change this down and you'll get a uh, slightly more uh, speed, but less quality. And that's just the compromise you have to make. So uh, you'll see as well, um, if you were to build this it actually takes a fair length of time. There's quite a lot of stuff in this. Um, this uh, example assets that you actually don't need. One of the key things that you'll see here is the uh, light probe group. So um, this kind of gets in the way, but this is how you can create high quality lighting. If you're going to use baked GI and you want um, moving objects to also be affected by the lighting, you can create this light probe group. And it's worth playing around with and looking, looking to see what it's like. But for most people making a simple game, um, when you're not looking at uh, ridiculously high quality graphics, it doesn't um, it's not important until you get to the real refinement stage. So the example assets can easily be uh, deleted from your scene and everything will still work. You'll see we still have the post-processing volume, the directional light and the main camera. I'm just going to quickly remove that, um, remove the component from the script component for the camera. So I've got a kind of looks a bit like the basic scene that we have. You'll see inside the example assets folder as well. This is all the materials, models, prefab shaders and textures that exist within those example assets that I deleted from my scene and uh, you're quite safe to uh, completely get rid of these 
um, from your entire um, project and uh, you'll have a, a bit more of a lightweight starting point. You'll see also when we first started, there's a, a like a readme thing um, and that contains uh, or draws from information within this um, tutorial info. This is where you can do, um, you can find some tutorial stuff that um, you may or may not want to look through. Um, the shader graph um, documentation can be accessed and the URP documentation can be accessed from this but if you want a nice lightweight one like the uh, standard um, template that's got nothing in you can happily delete those two things as well so you end up um, removing some of the space from there. So we're keeping the settings, we're keeping the scripts folder, we've only got a sample scene. Um, the presets contain stuff about um, how to import different bits and pieces and some of the defaults. Again, uh, keep that. Uh, you don't want to delete it or things will go kind of wrong. And um, yeah, you want to keep that presets folder and the materials just has, the materials folder just has the, the default skybox that you can see in your scene. So most people would create a materials folder anyway um, when you're creating a project. So um, that's no big deal. Uh, that's the basic. So what we've got here is um, is uh, the universal render pipeline ready to go. And I'm just going to quickly go on to show you some of the cool um, features that this um, gives us out of the box. So as I mentioned before, the um, post-processing effects is a really cool um, addition that comes by default. So you don't need to download a package anymore. The post-processing volume uses the one that is uh, the profile that has already been set up in the, the default scene. So um, I don't know your uh, process for making new scenes but if you duplicate this scene you end up with this scene here if you're using a more um sorry you end up a clone of this scene here in your scenes folder you can also um, if you're using a more recent version of unity 3d you can also save this as a scene template um and that will just save this exact same scene as a template so when you go to new scene it will come up in one of your templates by creating a default um, basic scene, it's the light and the camera that you'll see. So if we just um, make this one um, and we'll um, save the existing scene. So you'll see we have the main camera and directional light. In order to add the post-processing volume, you'll find it from the game object menu and then the volume menu and you just make a global volume. And we'll just leave that as, I really should rename it to post-processing, but we'll leave it as global volume. And then the profile you're looking for, if you hit the dot key, you'll see your one profile or any other profile that you, you may want. Um, it doesn't look quite like it because um, we've not set up absolutely everything, but you'll see that the post-processing is enabled. So if I uh, just whiz this up and down, you'll see the vignette that changes the values. And, uh, and it's really easy to add extra post-processing um, things like depth of field you can see here or motion blur. Um, are some of the more common ones. And again, if you just add a depth of field, um, click on all and it will enable everything with the depth of field. I'm going to set the mode to uh, the Gaussian one and you can set the values um, for whatever you want um, for that. And that just becomes part of that profile, um, the sample scene profile. So it's um, available in all of your scenes from then on. If you really want to um, have it, the lighting's a bit weird with this one if you really want to have it um, look exactly like the other one in the main camera settings the uh, volume mask if you change that to uh, nothing it will look exactly like the last one did and uh, I just wanted to show you the uh, shader graph as well so shader graph is one of the main reasons you would want to move um, move to this as well as uh, performance reasons but the uh, shader graph allows you to create visual shaders um, a, in uh, in kind of like nodes uh, in like a node system. So I'll just quickly show you. So I've got a materials folder that's been set up by the template. If I create a new, uh, I want a new shader graph sh um, shader, I can click on create and just go up to shader. So again, there's no packages involved in this one. You literally just go up to the shader graph and you can make a new universal render pipeline lit shader, for example. The lit shader, if it, it, it doesn't come up by default, but if I just say, I'll call this uh, mm, mm, blue fade or something like that, then um, this allows me to create a new shader graph um, without any extra packages or any extra dependencies. So if I double click this um, shader graph, you'll see this is the shader graph. And I'm not going to cover um, making shaders in this tutorial. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to um, um, how integrated it is within the universal render pipeline and obviously this works um, it works really uh, quickly and really performant so all of a sudden you can create these um, new shaders 
and uh, you can create material. So I've got blue fade, I'll create a new material um, on top of that and call it um, blue fade material. And then um, it's really easy to go to the shader for that. So we just go to the, um, the shader graph, there it is. So shader graph, and then we can see the blue fade shader. So all of a sudden this um, this material that we make, just like we make any other material in, this, in the standard renderer, um, has a custom um, shader that we can write in shader graph attached to it. So a uh, pretty powerful universal render pipeline. Once you get rid of all of the extra stuff and you, do, you accept that there will be some folders in here, it's actually really cool and uh, it works uh, really well. And I have seen that it does uh, render really nicely, um, the lighting, and it, it's a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's um, got you started with the Universal Render Pipeline. And uh, obviously you need to dig in more into the documentation if you want to learn more. Um, but this is just the basics of getting started and uh, getting the getting a project up and running with the Universal Render Pipeline. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and uh, good luck and stay tuned for more in the series.